There is blood. Yes, I did. You do see blood. I saw like huge colon cancer, like the quintessential apple core lesion. You and I, when I do a lie, if I miss it's attracting by now, when have you wrapped up so tight? What's up you guys, it's Donna. welcome back to my channel. So, um, if you haven't already done so, go ahead and subscribe right now to my channel. And follow me on Instagram, Donna PA, and go ahead and hit that notification button. So you can know every time that I put up a new video for you guys. As many of you know, I just completed, last year in December, my general surgery rotation. And so, um, I wanted to talk to you guys and give you guys all the juicy details about everything that... Um, I did as a PA student on that particular rotation. So for me, um, my rotation was a little bit different than I would think um, some other PA students might have because I was not just in general surgery. So general surgery is like the overarching branch of what I was in, but um, the surgeons that I would like that were my main preceptors they were actually surgical oncologists so I saw a lot of cancer you guys which was really sad actually um, and, and pretty hard uh, you know seeing these people navigate that particular disease but I saw a lot of cancer and um, as general surgeons um, everything is pretty much in like the abdomen or like you know like in that area so you know you're Thoracic surgeons would be in the upper chest cavity, but your general surgeons are in your lower abdominal cavity. So I saw a lot of like, you know, gastric stuff and, and, and the, those related things. But I also got to see, you know, speaking about gastric, I got to see a lot of bypass in bariatric surgeon. Um, and with my bariatric surgeon that I rotated with um, for a week, just to get a varied view of the general surgery realm. So I'm going to talk to you and just kind of give you a walkthrough of what I did on my days with the surgical oncologist and then what I did with my bariatric surgeon on my general surgery rotation. So typically the general surgeons, the surgical oncologist general surgeons that I did my rotation with, um, our day started at seven-ish with respect to surgery days. So that was Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We would be in the operating room and then Tuesdays and Thursdays were our clinic days. So on Mondays, if I woke up or, you know, again, Wednesday or Friday, I'd wake up very early, like around five-ish in the morning because I had to drive about 30 minutes or so 35 minutes to get to the hospital and then I wanted to look up cases um, the cases that we were gonna do so I was just familiar with them um, so I would get there early uh, get into my scrubs change and then go look up the cases that we were gonna do see when they were scheduled for there's a board that tells you um, essentially like what room you're in who the anesthesiologist is who your circulator nurse is um, who your scrub um, surgical tech is and um, gives you all that information and what the start time is and so um, I'd go look at the board to see what the various different start times were and then what room I was in typically if you were in like operating room let's say 13 then you would be well there's no there's no operating room 13 because it's like superstition so like if you were in operating room 12 um, so uh, you would be in that room all day uh, and so we'd start surgery at 730 um, when I went in I would always scrub with uh, chlorhexidine first um, so I would do like my three minute scrub or scrub with that first and then um, I would pat dry and then throughout the rest of the course of the day I would just um, kind of dry uh, scrub or wash um, so I always made sure I did that Prior, so that when I'm going in I would just do like the surgical gel and scrub with that so um, once I got that and got all that information I'd go look up the patients go look at the cases and I would also pre round on any patients that we had like the week before that may have been um, still in the hospital or 
they were added onto our caseload overnight. So those are the things that I did in the morning. And then our case would start at 7.30. You always go in, introduce yourself to the scrub tech. I would write my name on a little whiteboard um, and who, like who I was, so PAS2, so they know who I was. And then I would always get my own gloves, get my own um, gown, and then I would ask them, do you want me to open it onto your field or do you want me to just open it and pass it to you? Do you just want me to give it to you? Um, depending on if they were already gowned and um, gloved up or not. So once I've done that, um, then I kind of just wait around, like, because um, I would sometimes leave my number on the whiteboard, but, you know, like, they don't have your number. Like, they have their residence number, they have the physician's number. Um, so you're just kind of, like, ducking in and out <laughs> to make sure, like, you're not missing the case because cases, I I don't know if I've ever been on a case that actually, like, went on time like started on time maybe one started at 7 30 but they rarely start on time so there's always something going on like the patient's running late or whatever like you know the turnover was a little bit longer than expected so um i would just kind of hang out in either the locker room or in the little like general lounge area for staff and like study um, while I waited to see if the case was in. Once the case came in and the patient was there, um, I'd go in and I would help. So I'd help move them to the bed, to the operating um, table. I would help like, you know, set them up. Like I said, we did a lot of like abdominal cases. So um, if it was like an inguinal hernia or if I had to do, if we were doing like an umbilical, hernia or hiatal hernia with the bariatric surgeon or anything gallbladder related or a mat liver mass resection or a colon resection. Those are all different types of um, surgeries that I saw. And then like sometimes you have to like shave them and so I would do that and take the tape and like take the the hair off of them or if we're fancy we had one with like the actual like sucks it up um, in. But not always. So I would do that, tape them up, make sure everything's like all their SCDs, which is the thing that like squeezes your leg so you don't get a blood clot. Um, and then I just kind of hang out there, see if they need me to do anything else. And if not, I go outside, get my dry um, scrub, like with the surgical gel, and then do my scrub and scrub my hands and wash it up and go all the way up to like an inch above elbow and then you come in like this you know like you walk in hands kind of up you're really gonna be dry by the time you get to your surgical tech but always do that so that your sleeves don't touch and, and you become contaminated so then I'd go in I'd put my hands in my coat my little my um my gown and then um I'm ready to like get you know my gloves and glove up and then I go and I stand where I need to stand. So depending on if there was a resident in on the case with me or not, obviously I got to do more. I got to stand closer to the physician or right across from them. Um, and also depending on the case. So uh, with respect to a lot of the cases that I saw, they were camera ran cases, uh, you know, laparoscopic camera ran cases. So um, I would get to drive the, the camera. Um, which is a lot harder than you think, you guys. Like, you, you know, you see this and, and they make it look really easy, especially like really, really um, experienced PAs and registered for nurse first assist. They make it look really easy, but it's not. So, because um, you're kind of like your orientation is off, like you want to make sure like things aren't blurry and, you know, there's, all, it, there's so many components that makes it a lot harder than you think. Um, but I'd run the camera, I'd, you know, they'd let me know, like, if they want me to turn left or right. Um, after a couple days of doing it, you kind of get used to where you need to go, where you need to push the camera in more, back it up from. You always, you know, they, I was told you always keep the working instrument in the center of the screen. Um, and you always, you know, follow it for them so they can see where they're cutting, where they're going. Uh, you don't want them to nick something, um, you know, cut a vessel or something along those lines. So um, that is what I would do. I'd hold the camera. Um, 
with my surgical oncologist, I got to like pull out some tissues, you know, clamp some stuff, which was really cool. Um, you know, using the actual laparoscopic tools, which again, like when I was trying to staple for an umbilical hernia and you have to staple on the um, the abdominal wall, like I'm there and I'm pushing on the outside, but also on the inside so that the staple can hit like that. And it's like not easy, you guys. Like, because how you're holding it, it's just n not the most comfortable way, but you make it work. Um, so I would do that. And then once the case was over, you know, after you've, you've been told what to do, then the patient will wake up um, from anesthesia and then again I'd help out. So I would take off the SCDs, I would take off the, the kind of band that's holding them to the operating table, go out and get the bed and bring it in and then take them, help them um, transfer the patient to the bed. Um, after that we go and we walk to the PACU for a recovery and then the physician will dictate and I'll ask any questions that I didn't ask while I was in on the case. And then you just kind of go and you wait for the next case and that's really your day in surgery. Um, with bariatric surgery it was pretty cool because you got to see um, the patients in clinic as well and then you got to see like you know ruin wise done and I got to see an actual like bariatric sleeve removal or uh, uh, I mean a bariatric sleeve done or or the black band removal and and you know I got to see a gastric bypass and just learning about these various different procedures and the different indications the different complications that come with it um, how it affects your life it was really interesting to see so that was also pretty cool running the camera with that was a little bit more you know like taxing and learning because it's again you're dealing with like larger individuals so you have to like maneuver a little bit more you know push up on the abdomen wall a little bit more but still pretty um pretty interesting on clinic days so clinic would start at 8 or 8 30 depending on when the first patient came in so again like you would go in but for me it was like a little bit more of a shadowing experience because un unless they were coming in for the first time so a lot of these patients like i said they were surgical oncologists so they've been following them so they have a relationship with them so it's hard for me to come in and be like hi i'm adana the pa student um you're coming back from, you know, your three weeks post-op, you know, because I really don't know them like that. So uh, I did a lot of shadowing in that sense um, when dealing with established patients, but new patients, I get to go in and kind of see what's going on with them, ask them questions, what, what they were coming in for, then go present to my preceptor, and then we'd go in together. Um, he would then come in and just like do the actual physical exam, um, bring me in, and um, I would also like, you know, feel the hernia or feel, um, you know, where they say they're feeling a mass and those type of things or where the pain is. Um, on clinic days, we also did like INDs and then we also did uh, port removals. So a lot of what we did in the OR as well was port placements, which is kind of just a glorified central uh, central line, um, you know, in the subclavian. And so, uh, we did like a good amount of those. I think like I was pretty proficient in understanding like the step by step procedure of how to put a port in. Um, and I also got to do like a lot of like suturing with the port placements and then like my melanoma removals. We also got to do port removals in the clinic, which was pretty cool. Um, it's just kind of done on a local anesthetic, so we'd put it in. Um, you'd make the incision, so you lidocaine them up, make the incision, and then you have to go in and like kind of cut the port out because although you've sutured them in with dissolvable sutures, it's kind of scarred down. So you cut it out a little, um, and then you have to pull the whole port out. Um, and then suture up the layers um, and and I did quite a few of those as well not by myself obviously um, 
always under supervision, supervision but um, I did a, a few port removals um, in my tenure, in my four weeks um, at that rotation, which was pretty cool. Um, but ultimately, that was it. Uh, Thursdays were kind of like a shorter day. So that was something that um, I thought was really cool. It varied the length of your day. So some days were longer than others. I might be in surgery from 7.30 a.m. to like... 7 30 p.m. Um, and then other days I may be in surgery from 7 30 to 10 and then my day is done and I actually have to now go and study you know um, but having that time to myself or having that time to see like how the surgeons work or even go pop into another surgery which you can do you can always ask if that's possible um, it was cool so that was it that was my surgical rotation you guys um, so if you're interested in surgery um, I hope this video was helpful to you there is blood yes I did you do see blood you do see some really cool things you do see some you know like pomas you see uh, various different things coming out I did see a lot of cancer I saw like huge colon cancer like the quintessential apple core lesion and that, that was like amazing to me but it's also pretty cool seeing um these patients afterwards you know seeing the follow-up and seeing like how well they've been doing um and hearing oh you know like we got all the cancer out so yeah but that was it that was my rotation in a nutshell i hope you guys like this video i will also be doing um just all the details of my OBGYN rotation as well, um, and then my critical care rotation. Hope you guys liked it. If you haven't already done so, subscribe and follow me on Instagram at the PA. Hit that like button and um, leave me a comment in the comment section below. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!